I'm thrilled to welcome you to the exhibition, George Biddle, The Art of the American Social Conscience. With a career that spanned six decades, George Biddle made paintings and murals, prints, drawings, and illustration art, and made sculpture, ceramics, and even furniture. He was a politically engaged figurative artist of great delicacy, who often used social satire as a tool to undermine injustice. He questioned authority and spoke out about the horrors of war. I've learned so much about George Biddle from my friend, Michael Biddle, the artist's son. We talked about his father's lifelong traveling and his many self-portraits which show him to be an artist on the move. Well, he was also a great walker. He loved to walk. We walked across the divide between Italy and Austria. He loved to ski. I don't think he was an expert, but he loved the outdoors. I think that he wanted to portray himself as an outdoorsman and a, maybe a man of the woods. I don't know. Were skunk hats uh, popular at one time. I sort of have a feeling that they may have been. <laughs> he was a tremendous traveler and traveled all his life. Why he had such a compulsion to travel, I don't know. I mean, that to me is a deeper question. There seemed to be a kind of restlessness about him. He always wanted to be going somewhere. A ground-shifting experience for Biddle was living and working in Mexico City at several times in his life, where he came to know many of the leading mural artists of the day, including Diego Rivera. In the 1920s, he visited Mexico, and I think he was blown away by the work that the Mexican muralists were doing. And uh, when Roosevelt was elected president, my father wrote to him, they'd known each other in college, and suggested that maybe American artists could be employed to paint murals as part of the uh, relief program, the WPA. So he was uh, instrumental in starting the mural program. I have to add that my Uncle Francis was Attorney General under Roosevelt, so he's depicted in that mural, as is my aunt, and I think in the central panel, the woman seated in the chair to the right of that panel is my mother, and that baby is me. <laughs> when my father was invited to Mexico, my mother and I accompanied him. He was commissioned by the Mexican government to do a mural. It was painted in the Supreme Court building in Mexico City, and he chose a subject matter to make it an anti-war mural and the imagery of the apocalyptic horse riding over the landscape of destruction. And my mother also did uh, bas-relief sculptures that kind of intertwined into the painting. Rivera traded work with my father. We had a Rivera painting for a long time. And I still have a drawing by Rivera that says to my good friend, George Biddle. So they, at one time, they had been very close. And I think that when Rivera had wanted to attack the ruling capitalist class and he painted his sort of ugly caricature of John D. Rockefeller. 
and the Rockefellers were furious and, the, and destroyed the whole mural. My father was very vocal in speaking up in support of him and, and condemning what the Rockefellers did to, you know, this great mural. As Michael describes, a deeply felt sentiment that runs through his father's work is a plea to humanity against the violence of war. He served in the army in the First World War as a captain. In the Second World War, he was a war correspondent. I think he liked to be where the action was. And he may have felt some sense of duty to cover the war, even though he was older. He was in his 50s then. There was a government program of sending artists overseas to record the war, and he was part of that group, and I think he was assigned to Life magazine. He was in the landing in Sicily, where the first troops came ashore. He recounted once driving in a Jeep, and the Jeep in front of him went over a landmine and was blown up. So he had a lot of very frightening experiences, I think. He made some lithographs and drawings about the rise of fascism in the 1930s. There's one about two rats in front of a bleeding corpse of a woman and one rat is saying to the other, let her bleed a little bit more. And the woman represents European civilization and the two rats are Hitler and Mussolini. And my uncle Francis was attorney general under Roosevelt. And after Truman became president when Roosevelt died and Truman chose his own attorney general and Francis, my uncle, was appointed one of the judges in the Nuremberg trials of the Nazi war criminals. Through my uncle, my father was invited over to make sketches and drawings of the trials. And I think these were commissioned by Look Magazine, if I'm not mistaken. The anti-war message is central to understanding the meaning of so much of Biddle's art. Looking at his amazing rendition of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, I can't help but feel that we are all Ichabod Crane, doing our best to crouch low and escape the headless horseman above who brings war and death. He was a great storyteller and communicator. In that sense, I think he loved a good conversation. And he liked to be a little bit provocative sometimes, too, getting people to talk about things that they might not necessarily have wanted to talk about. <laughs> Although I remember him saying, God help you if you ever become an artist. Because I think he realized that an artist's life is very tough and uh, you know, it can be problematical. Mm -hmm.